Me, 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 me. Hi, everybody. My name is Nelson Everhart. Welcome back. And I think we just decided last time to kind of ignore the vast swaths of time that passed between my videos. We, we did decide that, right? Yeah, okay, I thought so. As of this recording, Lemuria hit test realm, and everybody has sort of gotten to experience the craziness that has been my life for the last few months. I thought Caramel was a crazy assignment, but, but Lemuria was sort of just all over the map stylistically. Uh, so what I've decided to do is do three videos on the Lemuria to try to cover all of them just because there's there's no one representative track. All right, guys, spoiler warning, spoiler warning, spoiler warning. So my plan is to release these videos when the world has actually been released. So there may be some minor plot points that uh, are discussed here. So you have been warned. I have to kind of talk about the whole world of Lemuria in one go. So this beginning might be a little bit longer than usual. So if you want to jump ahead, I'll leave the uh, uh, the time reference here below. Lemuria was described to me as an amalgamation of the spiral worlds, as, as has been talked about ad nauseum online. So the music was just in wildly varying styles. I did spend some time listening to the reference material, which is also from just a bunch of different sources, TV shows, films, uh, even you know commercial record albums. And they were spread across like decades, and so there wasn't a lot holding it all together. I find creativity is usually best served by having some kind of set of rules or some restraint on it. Um, just something to push off of. For Wizard City, I, I sort of limited myself to kind of smaller orchestration so that I had somewhere to build there. And, and that really did help me define some of the themes that have kind of become endemic to the game. So the creative direction that I gave to myself is that I would pretend that I'd be writing for a TV orchestra during like the 70s and 80s because they're spoiler alert again they're sort of dealing with superheroes i was thinking about like saturday morning cartoons that i'd watch as a kid like in the late not to date myself but late 70s early 80s kids tv of the time was really you know pretty low budget they didn't have a lot of time to turn around you know anything of quality and had to be creative with those restrictions going on so i tried to put myself in that headspace and i wrote as if i had an assignment every week for like a different tv show so a private detective show one week a fantasy like barbarian thriller uh, another than like a Hawaii Five O, yeah. Whatever the assignment, I just had to make it work with the resources at my disposal. You know, with an orchestra that maybe didn't have a lot of expertise in a certain style of music, maybe didn't have the the exact instruments that they needed for a certain style, but they just had to get it something in the can every week. All right. So with that out of the way, let's listen to the first piece, which is going to be the Ursai Village theme. <laughs> And that was the loop. 
So this area, I probably got less input from KI, I think because it's more or less kind of a straight ahead, hey, it's Hawaiian kind of themed, it's really chill, it's, you know, you're on the beach, you're sipping a Mai Tai, it's in the shadow of a giant volcano that may or may not play out in the level, we'll see. So two instruments that always spring to the forefront of my mind when, when somebody says, write something, you know, kind of vaguely Hawaiian, are the ukulele and the pedal steel guitar. Didn't really have a lot of ukulele sounds, so I found this one. And it's one of the harder things to do, I think, is trying to simulate a stringed like a guitar instrument on keyboards. You have to kind of know how the voicing works on the strings. My dad bought my daughter a ukulele for Christmas, and so I've messed around with them a little bit. Uh, and the tuning is still kind of mysterious, but to access the right kind of harmony that, that a ukulele can play, there's only four strings on it. So you're not playing a lot of big chords. You're mostly sticking to the triads. And so this one totally fit the bill and it's quite affordable. It's from a company called Splash Sound. A lot of the, the ensembles that you're uh, simulating in this kind of music, they're probably an acoustic guitar. It's a ukulele, there might be something else. So I have a mandolin in here as well. And these are all kind of complementing each other. So here's just the mandolin. So I was trying to find some, you know, different strumming patterns that they could uh, play that would make it all kind of sound more convincing. Here's the ukulele part by itself. Kind of using that bottom string as sort of the, the bass to kind of kick off. Also have the Native Instruments uh, Strummed Acoustic Library. To me, it's, it's a good sketch pad instrument. Uh, in that if you just you just need some chords here and that's kind of the first thing you're sort of putting down it sound it sounds amazing but the patterns are all kind of tricky to put together so take some time to get something specific so I'm doing some kind of tricky <laughs> tricky patterns there to keep to make it sound good with the other So all three of those together come out sounding like this. Build this kind of rhythm section up slowly. Uh, then the other quintessentially uh, Hawaiian sound that sort of brings you to the beach as fast as possible, for me anyway, is the pedal steel. It's also sometimes called a lap steel guitar. It's basically a guitar on its side. And the, the, the more important part is probably that you play it with a slide with kind of like a metal thimble on your finger and you can slide between the notes really well. So here is the pedal steel part. With those really smooth and broad slides. And that kind of lazy vibrato on the long notes. So you can see I tried to space it out a little bit uh, in the piece. And there's basically two sections to it. There's, there's this piece at the front and then there's another section kind of starting here using the pedal steel more in the front half and the back half. And this is another instrument that I went out and found. This library is by Indigenous. I have a few of their products, including the uh, acoustic guitar collection. There it is. Okay, guys, it's Black Friday as I record this. Like, don't let me look at any more sound libraries, okay? One of the cool things about this library is that it lets you pick these ornaments uh, that are what happens when you hit uh, the key at a certain velocity. So you can see that that's just a kind of a straight note. But if I hit it uh, above this threshold here, it does that little bend up to, to the note. And then these guys over here are what you can do if you hit it really softly uh, underneath this threshold. I'm trying to hit it that softly. There you go. 
I love finding little smaller libraries that it's like, you know, it's not going to break the bank, but you just get some immediately that you can kind of play with and, and it's super playable right off the bat. So that was inspiring. I've always been inspired by sounds. I got my start in video games working at a company called Acclaim down in Austin. And they actually asked me what I would like to, you know, what sound modules and sound libraries I'd like to have in my studio. And when I showed up on my first day, it was all there waiting for me. I got to go plug it in and start using it. And I just immediately wrote like 10 different things the first day because it was, I just loved playing with the sounds a lot. Also with the strings, I have a harp doubled in here. I wouldn't normally uh, do that kind of thing with a harp, but that uh, harp from Orange Tree Samples is really flexible, and I, I think it works in a lot of pop contexts like this. So I should also talk about why there's two different upright bass sounds here. The upright bass in the doghouse, which is a, uh, you know, an upright bass is like a big, huge wooden thing, right? A dog could probably fit in there. Pretty common term for them. I was originally using the just the default contact library upright bass and it sounds really good a lot of stuff. I was just looking for some more kind of character and reality out of it so I found this other library. Straight Ahead Samples is the name of the company and this is their uh, acoustic bass. Here's the original bass which I thought sounded fine. Just sounded a little kind of flat and lifeless. So here's the other the straight ahead bass. So good sound, plus it lets you kind of balance pickups from the body, the neck, and the direct sound. Here's both of them. It just kind of got some of the punch from the straight ahead samples and some of the round, you know, lower stuff from the upright bass. And now up here, these are the vocal tracks. Yes, it is yours truly. There was a Hawaiian gentleman named Don Ho who did a lot of like, you know, Christmas specials from Hawaii. And um, in some, some of the future videos, we're going to talk more about kind of the lounge and sort of exotica music movement that came about maybe in the you know 50s and 60s sort of a fascination with sort of more tropical destinations and Don Ho was was very much a present figure you know when I was a kid when you talked about Hawaii you know what little you knew about Hawaii it was probably you know oh well you know he plays some music he just had a really kind of smooth voice he sang a song called Tiny Bubbles which is you know it's just smooth and, and dreamy and, and I was trying to channel some of that so I, I dialed it up It's really, really lazy transitions between one note and the other. Because again, you know, you're sitting back on the beach. I get sort of short synopses of what's going on in the world. I don't necessarily know everything that's going to happen in the level. They just give me enough to kind of go, that's the, the vibe you're setting. So I didn't really know if the volcano was going to play into it. But it's sitting there right on the beach and it's overshadowing everything. I mean, literally and figuratively. So a little cheeky uh, allusion to that because there's a big buildup accentuated with the timpanis and some cymbals here. <laughs> kind of a maybe a beach boys version of a volcano exploding <laughs> so it starts just with a nice and chill laying back on the beach you know kind of d triad and then i wanted to skew it a little bit to maybe say you know something nefarious might be coming so i wanted another chord that sounded a little weird it just raised a harmonic eyebrow if you will so the d major triad goes into an e minor seven flat five over g You know, weird kind of twist uh, on that harmony. Because normally uh, the fourth in that scale would be a G major, but this is really giving it more of a... That could also be thought of maybe as a G minor six. Trying to use a little psychology to anticipate how the player might be feeling as they're laying sipping a cocktail on the beach while there's a volcano right there, knowing what volcanoes have a tendency to do. Some vibraphones there. This is another really great instrument to get into sort of a relaxed state of mind, I guess. 
Going back to the kind of TV orchestra idea, I started thinking about the vibes as a really flexible instrument. They're sort of mysterious, but also can be relaxing. And I thought that it could, uh, I could use it in a lot of the different styles that I was being asked to write. And, and I love what it's adding here. I also found this twang guitar. This is actually a um, library released by this guy, David Burgess, Burgess or Burgess.com. He has some free instruments there and they all, they sound really good. This one's saying it sounds fantastic. I didn't really need a whole lot of Beach Boys twang in here, but that's plenty. You just hit one note to uh, play a chord and you know the major chords are on this part of the keyboard the minor chords are on another part of the keyboard here we go <laughs> um so israel kamaka we will ole i think is how you say it pardon me if, I, if i'm not saying it right uh he was a hawaiian musician and songwriter yeah 1993 Somewhere Over the Rainbow and What a Wonderful World it was just everywhere. And it was just such a ginormous hit. And it kind of inspired me to write something like that. It was giving me a little bit of, you know, song structure. So this is right here is where, about where it starts. And one of the things that I was feeling at the beginning, um, because of all the, the lazy tempo, there really wasn't, didn't want to have too many rhythmic elements that were driving it. Um, but this piece seemed like it had to have a little bit more underlying heartbeat, a pulse moving it along. So I brought the shakers in for this. Cine Sample Center Park Library. Plastic pear and turtle she, uh, shell shakers. Man, I say that five times fast. Plastic pear and turtle shell shakers. If you've played any auxiliary percussion in your life, you can picture them right now. Uh, and the taikos, which are not Hawaiian, they're Japanese, but Japan is not a million miles from Hawaii, and there's definitely some uh, cultural cross-references in there. I didn't, I didn't want the B section to feel like a completely different beast, so I brought the pedal steel back, sounded like the, felt like the right thing to do there. That basically wraps it up. I think as we look at the other couple of Lemuria tracks, you're going to see some similarities that might be surprising. <laughs> we talked about the the vibes being used in different ways in different places. So we'll get to see that happening. So I hope that was informative or at least help you pass some time. Uh, if you'd like to, please drop a like and uh, comment down below if you have a favorite track from Lemuria. All right. Thanks, guys. See you next time.